Hello, this is Nathan Stuke from uh, Whisper, and uh, we're here to talk a little bit about leadership again. And uh, does it really matter? Uh, this is part two. Uh, last uh, last time we talked about kind of why we need leadership and what is it. And then I'm going to try to get into a little bit more of some practical things that you can think about as a leader today. Uh, hopefully, it'll be insightful for you. And uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and kind of jump into it. So I'm not going to rehash what we talked about last time fully, but um, just kind of give a little bit of background. I started Whisper back in uh, 2003, uh, September 2003. Uh, and these are some of the stats. It, it wasn't even really out of our garage. We started out of an 86 Honda Accord with a fold-up ladder. Uh, and I uh, convinced my wife it was a good idea to put $36,000 across three of our credit cards because uh, everybody needs internet, right? Um, but then fast forward to 2020, uh, and we've grown substantially and uh, moved out of our garage, moved out of the old barn we were in, and, and now we have multiple offices across multiple states, uh, and we've really been able to, to grow and, and grow well. And I attribute that to leadership uh, of, of our employees, uh, leadership of, of myself and the executive coaches that I've used. Uh, and I'm going to hopefully be able to impart some of that information and, and some of that knowledge onto you so you can uh, learn from my own uh, my own mistakes as well. Um, so as I do with everything is you you define your success. Um, I never want anybody to think that I, I think down on them or somebody should think down on them because, you know, they have a WISP that has a thousand customers and they're completely happy with that. Um, there is no problem with that at all. Even a hundred customers, there's there's no problem. Uh, I want you to know that you define your success, and if you define it, uh, I think you'll always be successful. Uh, so set the bar where you think uh, that you want to be and, and try to achieve that. Um, so last time we talked about leadership, and, and these were some of the words that came up when you look at in Google and you look in a thesaurus as to what leadership is and, and how we kind of frame it up in, in our society. And the problem with leadership is when you have a good leader, and you ask people to articulate why they're a good leader, it's very difficult, right? You get some of these words here, um, but you get, well, he's just a good leader because the way he does it or the way she she handles the situation, she's a good leader. It's like, well, what what makes that? And um, we, we talked about some of these, uh, some of the words up here don't even make any sense, like personableness, uh, wonkiness is how you describe me playing basketball. Um, that's why I was a good swimmer. Um, but really, leadership comes down to that choice. And, and I know that doesn't describe really a, a great leader, it, it, but they had to make that choice. And they first make the, the choice to be that, uh, a leader. And then through um, trial and error and through learning from others, uh, they can grow into being a, a great leader. And today I'm going to go over a couple of those, uh, those uh, things to reference how, how you can think about being a leader and what you need to do. Uh, so last week, we also talked a little bit about you have to be choose to be a leader in your everyday situations, big or small. Um, you have to do it when no one's looking, right? Uh, respect is earned over over years and lost in seconds. Uh, and then you also be, have to be willing to do it when, when others are going the other direction. You have to be willing to say, no, I, I'm not going to crowd think. Uh, this is a direction I really think we need to be going. Uh, and and being a good leader sometimes is to know when to follow, uh, and it's also when to when to lead. Uh, so those are some of the things that we talked about last time. And now I want to get into something. I, I love this five uh, leadership abilities. Uh, this is something that comes from EOS, um, the Entrepreneurs op Operating System and Traction, and and they've broken it down nicely. And I would encourage everyone to read the Traction book. Uh, I'm going to go over just a little bit of these, just just high high level kind of the way that we think about them, and and, and then get into a couple other ones as well. Uh, so the first one is simplify. Is it as simple as possible? I, I, I know for me when I when I talk to Wisps and, and and I'm just talking to them about oh how do you do your sales process or how do you do your tower process, and we're going over problems they're having, usually by them explaining something to me, they drop off two or three. Um, steps. They're like, well, I don't know why. Well, we used to do that because an old manufacturer, we had to do it that way, but now we have a new one. And it was just kind of one Band-Aid over another Band-Aid over another Band-Aid without really taking the time to, to, to simplify these processes and simplify how things are done. Uh, and the reason this gets so important is if we just look at communication. So if you have two people in your company, um, you have two lines of communication. Every time that there is a conversation, 
both people are present because you can't have a conversation uh, without two people at least. And, and things are very clear, everybody's on the same page. If you simply add one more person, so 50% more people, you add 200% more complexity because now you have six lines. And, and I, I've seen it happen to me multiple times where I'll have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with somebody and then they'll have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with somebody else. And then I'll have another one-on-one -on -one meeting with that other person. And, and the, tele, the, break, the broken telephone game, it comes back around and all of a sudden, you know, what I had originally said to that first person is definitely not what was translated to me when it came back around. Um, so we have a lot of complexity there, and, and you say, well, that's fine. We're just going to have meetings where all three people are there all the time. Okay, well, that, that may be practical with three people, but you know, now we get into to four people. So 100% more people, 600% more complex, 12 lines, and it, it just exponentially gets worse and worse. And now we have over 100 employees, and I haven't done the math up to find out how, more com how much more complex that is. But that's why it's so important to keep things simple keep the message consistent, uh, and you have to spend time simplifying things. So as a leader, think about, you know, is it a Band-Aid for a temporary fix, or is it a, are we getting to the root of the problem to simplify it? Uh, because a lot of the problems you get faced with as a leader, that you're, fix, you're solving symptoms, and then you feel like you're just constantly treading, treading water trying to, to fix all these symptoms, whereas if you get down into the root of the problem, um, you can actually solve those. So having a simplified approach is something very, very important. And it, it takes the leader to, to lead that, that charge for simplicity uh, and making things as, as easy, but still functional for your business. Uh, the next one is delegate. This one I think is a, an interesting one. I, I struggled with delegation early on and probably still struggle a little bit where, you know, it's like, well, it's just faster if I do it myself, right? If, if I just get it done, then then I'll, I'll just get it done and it'll be done right. I don't have to go back and redo. Um, but the way I had to change my thinking is, can they do it 80% as well as me? Uh, and, and three people doing the job 80% as well is still better than me doing 100% of it because I need to be on doing other things that I need to get done. Uh, so when you delegate, you're not looking for perfection. You're, yes, I would love to have everybody do it 100%, 110% as well as I can do it. Uh, but in some cases, that isn't the, 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 the case. So you want to be able to say, okay, I'm, I'm okay with 80%. Let me coach and train them, help them train them to do it better than, than what you were doing. And hopefully through a hiring process and through putting the, the right people in the right seat, which we'll talk about a little bit later, you'll actually be able to find people that do an amazing job, way better than you could do in something. Uh, and the reason this is important is as you delegate, you kind of, you can see you have just you. And then as you grow, Everybody revolves around you. And then as you grow, you have people who report to people who report to people. And that's where having that, that, that delegation uh, starts to become real important because you have to give them ownership and say, you own it. You don't want to be the bottleneck of your company. Uh, and that's where I was in about 2007, 2008, when I started reading all the books that I was reading is that I, I woke up and realized I was the bottleneck because people were deferring to me to make all the decisions. And the healthy way was to enable my employees uh, through delegation and through support to be able to do that. Uh, so when you delegate, again, it's hard. Um, normally when you delegate, you don't want to just say, hey, go figure this out and, and come back to me and let me know how you're doing. You want to show them how to do it um, with you where you do all the work, but they watch you. And then you want to have them do the work while you're, you, you kind of are standing over their shoulder and watching. And then you want to have them do all the work without you there, but then you have a follow-up meeting to make sure the work was done right and if they had any questions. And then you know that you can kind of only do a spot check. Uh, I remember early on when I was training installers, um, it's so easy to do the installs correctly when you know you have someone watching over your back to, that would stop you from doing something wrong. And we would have installers that would fly through an install, and then the second they were out all by themselves and no one was there to confirm or deny that they were doing it right or wrong, they kind of like froze up and they had to call us all the time. So then we realized our training wasn't quite right. Uh, so when you do that delegation, I would really uh, encourage you not just to like, oh, hey, here, take this. <laughs> uh, you need to show them how and train them. And that'll give you more comfort in how the, that delegation works. Uh, and, and delegation is a great uh, tool for leaders to use because it allows you to free up your time to go on to the next thing that you have to get done. Uh, the next uh, next one is uh, planning and predicting. I, I love this one. We, uh, you know, if you if you never really look to see where you're going, then you'll end up with roads that look like this one, all curvy. 
uh, or you'll end up, you know, I think the saying is if, if you don't know where you're going, it doesn't matter how you get there. Um, so when we look at planning and predicting, as a leader, you want to be in the long-term view beyond 90 days, where are we going? What do we need to have done? Kind of, it doesn't have to be an exact uh, science, an exact number, but you need to have a general idea. And then your short term is within the, the next 90 days. What am I working on? What do I need to get done? How are we, how are we working towards that? Uh, with When is this person going to be hired into my, my group? And then how long does it take to train them? Uh, rather than saying, oh, I, I need somebody and, and I'm planning on having them be a fully viable employee the day after they get hired. You need to plan out how long it's going to take. And, and I think this one, an example I would give you is, again, with our installers, we, we've had several of our um, field operations managers come to us and say, hey, we need three more installers. And, and as, a, as a leader, it's like, okay, I, I want to get you all the tools and the resources you need. Let, let's get more installers. But the simple question back to them was, okay, well, how many installs are your installers doing today? How many service tickets? And what's your coverage and capacity? Well, I, I don't know that. We just need three more installers. It's like, okay, well, a, as a leader, they should have been taking the time to, to plan out and predict how many they needed based on our growth and where we needed to, to go. And I don't discount the fact that their gut tells them they need uh, three more installers. But having a little bit more structure around that plan, saying, okay, 90 days out, 100 days out, Nathan, you said we want to get to 200 or 400 or 500 installs a month. I'm going to work that backwards and figure out that I need X number of installers. And that's something that you have to teach a lot of people because a, a lot of people, and when they're young in their leadership, um, they're not quite thinking too far out. They tend to think day of firefighting, what am I putting out? I don't have time to do anything but put out fires. Um, but if you're able to plan and predict, you'll start to see that there's a change and that you can less things become a fire because you're able to to think about them. Uh, the other one is systematize. Uh, so this is what we call the whisper way. Uh, so we have a way of doing business. Uh, it, it's it's our core principles and our values of what we do. We we have documentation on it. Um, we fell into this whole whole big mistake of of we tried to document everything, you know, down to the the one time a customer would call in and needed a credit because their house got blown over by a tornado and we we shouldn't be charging them. And we all agreed we shouldn't be charging them. So we would literally write that into our procedure. If a customer calls in and their house has been destroyed by fire or 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 tornado or whatever, don't charge them for their internet until they get it rebuilt. Um, that's a great policy to have. It's awesome for the customer. But what happened is we were trying to document 100% of every little one-off case that could happen. And what you want to be able to do is you want to document about 20% to get 80% of the results. So a new person comes into a role. This is the whisper way for your role. And this is the documentation we have to teach you how to do your job. And then the 20% of the time that it's a one-off case and we don't understand then that's when they can go to a senior person on the team or that's when they go to their, their direct report and say, okay, how, how do I handle this situation? Oh, well, that, that makes sense. Uh, and that's another reason why we, we teach and preach our, our core values because we tell them that we can only document about 20% of what you need to, to know um, to get 80% of the results, right? So you, that documentation will cover 80% of the time. The last 20%, use our core values. Is it customer focused? Is it driven to a solution? Is it a lifelong learner where you learn something new? And we want them to use those core values um, in our process. So a lot of times when you're a small business and you say, well, I want everything to be systematized and I want it to be done this way, it it's not so much that you want it to be super rigid. We want consistency, but it's not super rigid. The idea is that you want to add rigidity to the core values of which core things that you have to get done and then leave the core values to do that test of, am I making the right decision? Am I not making the right decision? Uh, so that's something that I encourage. I know it takes a lot of time to do it, um, but I, I, when we went 100%, you know, we always joke, you know, it's in the wiki, right? If somebody asks a question, we're like, oh, go look it up in the wiki. And even though we had a search feature, it, you just couldn't find it. So it doesn't take that long if you only document 20%. And I would really encourage people to, to think about their processes and think about what they're doing especially as you add employees, it's important to have that. 
Uh, the other one is structure. And, and this one, you know, we're looking at it from a 10,000 foot view, uh, right people in the right seats. Um, I don't know if you've, if you've, anybody's read Jim Collins's book, uh, Good to Great. Um, you know, he uses the, this, the bus analogy, the school bus analogy, where, you know, you put everybody on the right seat on the bus. And, you know, I don't, I don't necessarily like that analogy. Um, in my mind, the only person doing any work on the bus is the bus driver. Um, I want my employees doing work. Um, so, you know, when, you, yes, I want people in the right seat in the bus, but the way I look at it is actually, I use the sailing analogy. And, and, you know, if you're the captain of your company or the captain of your department or the captain of your, your small team you have, it is okay for you to go down and help them, you know, map, mop the deck. It's okay for you to be able to go down and help them to, um, uh, you know, raise the anchor or something like that. But remember, you're not the one that's actually um, running the business when you're doing that. So if you're the only one that can actually um, be the captain, then it's okay to step away. But remember, then no one's being the captain. So I like the right seat on the bus. Yes, it's okay for you to help fill in when you need to. Um, but remember that when you're the leader or you're the captain, um, you have to schedule time for that, and you have to be willing to spend time uh, doing that part of it because no one else, uh, no one else can. Um, so that's a little bit about the the five uh, leadership abilities. Uh, again, that was from EOS. I kind of put my own spin and my own um, my own uh, examples of how we've kind of worked through this. But I think it's a great book for you to read, and it's really really good for you to understand um, what. Um, what you can do as a leader to be a better leader and how you can think about things. Uh, the next one is I wanted to go in a little more detail about the, the five levels of leadership. Um, this is a John Maxwell book. I love this book, uh, plus his other one that I'm going to talk about, which is The 360 Degree Leader, uh, because this is the first book I've read, and I've read a ton of leadership books um, that is, it actually kind of spells out what it means and, and what, what you need to do to be a leader in those areas. Um, you know, cause it's his first one, his level one, um, is position. You know, you, you have right, the right for somebody to follow you is that you have a, a, a job, a job position title that says you should follow me, right? I'm the foreman, I'm the, the, the CEO, or I'm the, the chief lifeguard or whatever you are. That's a, that's a title that you have that a lot of times it was interesting when I would talk to employees that would internally, they would put their name in the hat for being a manager. And they, they would say, well, I want to be the manager of this department or that. And we're like, well, you, you can't come to work on time on your own. You, you can't fill out your time cards correctly. And you have to be given every project you have to work on. You don't self-motivate. And they're like, oh, no, 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 no. When I get the manager position, then I'll be able to do all that. It's like, no, you should be able to manage yourself per first. And just because you have a title doesn't mean you're going to be a, a good leader or a good manager. Um, so I'm sure you can kind of think back to people you've worked with that, you, you know, follow me because I said so, do what I say because I, I know best. Those are people who are using their position, their title uh, to force people to follow them. And I'm sure if you think back, you're like, eh. Yeah, those were uh, people that I, I followed because I had to, um, but I definitely didn't want to necessarily or didn't enjoy the experience. Um, so the next one is permission. So th these are people who follow you because they want to, right? So you have a relationship. Yes, my title might be head lifeguard, but I have a relationship with my lifeguards. I know when they can work, when they can't. I try to work out the, what works best for them and for the whole overall what we have to get done as a lifeguard. We make sure we have their training. We make sure we have everything that they need. And, and they want to follow me because they see that I've got things lined out and I'm able to plan and predict you know, what we need to have done. And, and those, are, those are great places to be. And a lot of early managers and early leaders, um, this is where they kind of, they, they end up, they, they get to because they have that relationship with their people. Uh, and it, it's a very, very good uh, level to be at. And it's something that works it works well. And what's interesting with all of these levels is you can be a, a level one in one organization and a, a level two or a level three or even a level four uh, in another organization. Um, it just depends on where you are as a leader. And, and after I read the book, I kind of went back. And so that's, that's interesting how I, I can see now why I'm a different style of a leader in these different, uh, different organizations that I'm in. 
because I'm at, I'm at different levels. Um, the next one is that, that production. So people follow you um, because of what you've done for the organization. Uh, so this is, hey, I, I went into this department, I turned the department around, and, and now we're hitting all of our numbers. And now when I go into a, another department um, and I have to do the same thing or I go somewhere else, people are like, oh, yeah, yeah, I like what you did at that other way. I'm going to follow you because of what you've done in the past. And, and I'm going to, I'm going to, I still have permission, you know, I still give you permission and I, and I still have my position, my title, but it's a little bit deeper than just, okay, you know, I have this relationship with you, but you're an unknown and you're an un, you're not proven. You have a proven track record of success. Therefore, people tend to want to follow that success and be part of that. Um, so level four is the, the, the people development. Uh, people follow you because of what you've done for them. And, and I, I look at this one, and this one's super important to me because I, I want my leaders in my company developing leaders underneath them. Uh, because if you never develop a leader underneath you, um, I may not be able to move you up or move you over to another opportunity because there's no one to backfill you. Right, a lot of people who are in the the position level and even in the permission, you know, they're they're they feel um, targeted or they feel like, oh my goodness, you know, this is uncertain. If I train this person up to be better than me, then then they're going to take my job. And what do I do? Well, hopefully you move on, right? You move up and you move move over to somewhere else that's needed. Uh, and this one, uh, level four, uh, people who develop other people, that is just so important for for leadership and being able to say, yes, I'm. I'm willing to train these people and I'm willing to, to help them in their career, make the, the best decision to, to help them move along. And, and that's something that's super, super important to me as we build our organization. Uh, the last one, the pinnacle, uh, people follow you because of, um, because of who you are uh, and what you uh, represent. So this one is something that I, I strive for. Um, I think that uh, you know four and below are things that you can kind of do on your own. You can say, yes, I'm going to develop these people. I'm going to develop this. I'm going to, I'm going to have success in what I've done in the past and in and, and those relationships and everything. Four is kind of in my mind left up to other people have to say it. You know, what is your role? Have you taken on board level roles within your organization, within like a trade organization, or have you done other things that people see you from the outside and say, wow, that person stands for something that's somebody that I want to be. Another way to put this pinnacle is that your your reputation uh, precedes you, right? And, and I think John Maxwell is definitely in that 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 pinnacle level. That if you hear John Maxwell, people immediately think leadership, good business uh, practices. So his reputation precedes him, and, and and that's something that we can all strive for and say, okay, well, that, this is great. Right now, you know, I I run a whisper or a wisp and. I hope my reputation precedes me there, uh, but I'm also president of the board of our swim team that we started, that even though I was a good swimmer, my reputation does not uh, precede me there. Nobody knows of me as running a great swim team and everything. That's because I'm too early in my journey and my wife and I've only had it for two years. Uh, so you can be different areas, different levels in different areas. Um, but those are kind of the five levels. And to kind of recap that, the, you can be at different levels in different groups. But I would love for you to read his book and look at, he spells out actually the actions you need to take that kind of define each level. And I, I think that's a great way for, for him to, to do that and give you an idea of what, be, what makes that good leader other than just, well, you know, they're a good leader. Uh, this next one, this is something that I've kind of come up with on my own, and it, it's, it's, it's in response to a lot of questions I get. And that's probably the reason it's, it's my own is I, we, don't, we don't have any fancy graphics for it, right? We haven't done anything up. Um, but a lot of times people say, oh, I wish I could be the CEO. I would do whatever I want. And I wish I could do this. And I, I don't understand, you know, why they don't do this. And what this really represents is your, your rights and your responsibilities. So rights are on the left-hand side, responsibilities on the right. And, and everybody thinks that the higher up the chain you go, the more you get to do whatever you want. And it, it's really the opposite because I, I've had some employees, um, you know, from, from the worker level, um, tell me what they think of me, right? They, they lay into me for whatever reason. They thought I made a bad decision and I would love nothing more than to tell them what I think of them <laughs> and, and what, what they need to do. But that's, that's not something I'm going to do. I'm going to take the higher road. I'm going to listen to what they have to say. And then I will come back with, with, you know, the corrections that we need to make or the things we need to do. So 
a lot of times people think that the higher you go, uh, the more you, you you get to do whatever you want. And it's, it's exactly the opposite. You know, the customer, um, you know, they feel they have all the rights in the world, right? Oh, it, I have customer rights. Yes, you have a right to buy from me or not, but to buy from me in reality. But other than that, you don't really, but they, they take them on and their responsibilities are very low, right? Maybe just to pay us. Um, and, and that's that's it. Uh, so you can see that when you start to work on this this ladder of where it goes, there's a lot more constraints as you go up as a leader. And that's something that I don't want to discourage anybody from doing, but it's just something that it is a it's in reality, it's what's really happened. So it, it should help you with kind of understanding that as you as you become that leader, you will feel a little bit more constraint as to to what you can or can't do. Um, but it's typically because we're held to a higher standard and leaders should be right with more responsibility. Um, you're held to that higher standard and, and you can't do everything that you want to do uh, and for good reason. So the last one I wanted to talk about was this 360 degree leader. This is another John Maxwell book uh, that I, I really, really like. And it, a lot of people forget, they, they think that they lead to only people below you. Um, but you lead everywhere. You lead to yourself. That's a big one I'm on, that if you can't lead yourself, then you can't lead anybody else. Um, but you lead to your peers. So people you work with, uh, those are people that you, you don't have a direct report over them, right? You don't have a, well, I signed your paycheck or I can give you a bad review. Um, but you can be a very, very good leader um, without having the title that's over them. Uh, and that kind of comes back to that level two or level three, that if you think back and you say, okay, well, you know, I've worked with this person. Really good success in other areas of the company. That, that could easily be that level three peer leadership that you have uh, that we talked about in the five levels of leadership. Um, and then the other one, obviously leading down, we, we kind of, everybody kind of knows one is leading up. People think you can't lead up um, to, to your, your boss, uh, your reject report. But, but I would challenge that. I, I've been in several situations where I've had to lead up. And, and it, uh, yes, you, you take a different, a different angle sometimes, uh, depending on the, the boss that you're leading up to. Um, but I don't think it's that much difference because I, I treat personally, I treat my peers with respect. I treat people below me with respect. I, I treat people above me with respect. And yes, if you're leading up, maybe you treat them with a little bit more respect for where they are, more respect for their time because you know they're busy and those type of things. But I think if you have a good demeanor with how you treat everyone, it's very easy to 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 lead up. If you're more of a level one leader, um, it's easier to lead down than it is to lead up, right? If you're a level one, follow me because I have the title. That, that doesn't work so much when you're leading up because they look at you and say, no, follow me. I have the title, right? Because their title is higher than yours. Um, but but I would really encourage everyone to think about what it is like to, to lead up and and what do you do there? Because a lot of times we don't and we're like, oh, I knew the boss was making a bad decision, but nobody had the guts to say, hey, well, have we thought about it this way or have we thought about it this way? And, and it does take some practice uh, to be able to, to do that and, and have some of those uh, crucial conversations with how to how to speak up to your your boss and what you need to do. But it is a thing, and, and the 360-degree leader, the book by John Maxwell, lays it out really, really well. And, and I think it's a, a really good uh, book to help you understand where your leadership kind of, where you fit in the different areas of where you're trying to lead. Uh, so with that, these are some of the books. We'll list these books in the in the comment area so you guys can get a list of these books. Uh, but to kind of recap, we, we talked about, you know, leadership is a choice. Uh, that's first and foremost, you have to choose to be a leader. Uh, then we talked about the, the five abilities of a leader leadership uh, through the EOS system and what that allows you to do. It's kind of a framework to help you think better as a leader. Uh, and that's kind of the, the, the practical side of, of what's going on there. Uh, and then you have the five levels of leadership and those five levels of leadership um, help you understand where you fit and what kind of leader you are and what actions you need to do in, in those um, uh, what actions you need to do to become a better leader and a next step up. Uh, and then the the final one we talked about was the the 360 degree leader. So I think, let me see if I can switch over. I think we have a question here. Let's see if I can pull that up. And see here. Um, 
Any any questions from anybody? We have. Nope. All right. Well, good. It was a perfectly time uh, time Skype I got from someone else that had nothing to do <laughs> with what we're doing here, but that's okay. Uh, so I hope this was helpful for you, and I hope you can tune into some of the other ones we're doing. And uh, go out there. Leadership is a journey, not a instant. You're not going to figure out how to be a great leader right away, uh, but it's something you have to learn over time. And there's there's a lot of really good resources out there, and uh, these are some of the books that I would highly recommend. Um, you start reading to, to learn how to be a better leader. So thank you very much. Stay safe and uh, wash your hands. <laughs>